Welcome back to Quebec Corner. My name's Connor, and today I've got a list of over 70 creatures, mobs, and races to go over that I've spotted in Hytale so far. As always, we'll be using the Hytale website and trailer video for references, and it's important to note that the game is still in production, so some of these are bound to change. So, where better to start than races? The races in Orbis are varying and vibrant and differ from zone to zone. Starting with the Emerald Grove, we have the humans. At first, these people seem to be pretty simple farm folk, but as the trailer later reveals, they're actually technologically advanced and almost like a steampunk society with flying hot air balloons and crazy flying helicopter type devices. Some of the notable human characters that we get a look at on the website consist of Tessa and Kairos. Tessa looks pretty normal for a human, but Kairos on the other hand kinda looks... evil? Moving on, the next race in the grove are the Quebecs. These adorable cuties are the ones that the channel's named after, as you all well know, and their life cycle is formed of multiple stages, from dropping as a seedling, and being raised by the tree singers, to a fully grown autumnal elder. The clothing and weaponry they use seems to be made from leaves and tree bark, and they inhabit riverlands with their small tree villages. Trorks are the rivals of the Quebecs, with overgrown weaponry, large tusks and a fearsome look, from chieftains, warriors, and sentries to hunters and shaman, they come in many colours and variants. The third race are called the Slothians, they're based on sloths and as we know from my last video, possibly inhabit the lower regions of the caves of Zone 4. They definitely seem like a more peaceful race along the lines of the Quebecs rather than the Trorks, and it makes me wonder if there'll be factions in this game, kind of like the Horde and Alliance in World of Warcraft. Fawns are next up on the list. We don't know much about them so far, but I have seen one image that I'm pretty sure is a fawn, and it shows it controlling white wolves, similar to how the Trork does. The Outlanders are a possible other race, but I have a theory on who they might be. If there are two factions in the world, it could potentially mean that there are evil and good humans. The humans that are regular would just be the humans, and the bad guys would typically be called the Outlanders, probably because they've been outcast from society. The Howling Sands are next, and of course we know all too well the Skarak bugs that are infesting this place. The Brood Mother is the main one, followed by the Egg, the Lava, the Worker, the Tank, the Locust, and the Warrior. And they probably all work together to form one giant army of frustration and horror. Ferrans are another adorable little race that were previously enslaved by the Skarak's, and as far as we know, they show the insignia for freedom. They grow up to be shamans, just like some of the other races, but not much more is known about them. That's about it for our main races in the zone so far, however there are a multitude of other creatures and animals to go over so make sure you stay tuned. Gaia is the goddess of Orbis and she's referred to multiple times. It's not stated whether we will meet her in game or not, but we do go to her temple at some point in zone 1. Varin the evil could very well potentially be the antagonist of the series or the rival to Gaia. He controls the void which is the sixth element and the only one that Gaia doesn't hold balance over. Varen's forces are what make up Varen's spawn, and this includes things like the Void Dragon and the Void Eyes, which we've seen teasers of in small images. Next up, we have three different types of races that have been teased, however I'm not sure if they actually fit into overarching stories or are going to be incredibly central to the plot of the game. First up are Goblins. I'm pretty sure that we get a sneak peek at these guys in the trailer, and if this art is anything to go by, they're definitely in the game. What's more, I think I might have spotted one in one of these cave screenshots that were on the blog. If you zoom into this picture of the cave, you can actually see a weird creature at the bottom in the darkness looking up. What reason do I have to think this is a goblin? Well, look at the eyes. They're both yellow and they both have green skin. And taking a look at this piece of art that displays weaponry, we can also see this really strange small green figure, which definitely resembles a goblin to me. The Clops, or Cyclops, is the next one to discuss, and this has been revealed in two areas so far. Once in the trailer, when the scientist is messing with a pig, and the second one is of a concept art depicting a clop's house. Last video, I did mention the Murlocs. These guys haven't actually officially been named yet, but as far as we can tell, they exist on the water and in swampy marshlands. Hopefully they won't be as annoying as the Murlocs are in Warcraft. Okay, so that's all the races covered, but before we get to the animals of the game, I want to go over the skeleton mobs that we've had revealed so far. These are different archetypes that appear throughout the zones, and we've been given quite a good look at them. From a wizard, archer, sand warrior, frozen warrior, to a soldier, and we also get a brief preview at a mage, a stronger soldier type, and what appears to be a cloaked archer. And I think it's pretty safe to say that you're going to encounter these guys throughout the world, be it in caves or in dungeons. 
Okay, so we're finally here at the list of animals. This is everything that I know so far and have been able to spot. So, without further ado, let's start at the oceans. First off, we had the far ocean kraken. Then we have a shark, a crab. Man of war is some sort of jellyfish. There's a piranha and a moray eel. Fish seem to be plentiful with many types, including puffer and clown. And you can spot a few clams here and there if you look hard enough. Hammerhead sharks have also been revealed in this gameplay screenshot. Next, let's take a deep dive into the caves of Zone 4. From what we can see here, we're going to get a Cave Rex, a Dimetrodon, a Raptor, Prehistoric Chicken, and a Macaw, which is a type of monkey, if you didn't know. But one thing I also spotted on this screenshot here is a cute little Magma Snail, which could reside in those caves as well. In the Emerald Grove, we have mobs such as the Trork Wolves that can be controlled by hunters. We have a regular fox that we can see in the trailer, as well as some sort of weird white fox that we can see in this screenshot. We have rabbits, chickens, chicks, as well as a dog, a cat, a snake, pigs, sheep, pigeons, turkeys, deer, cows that can be seen in this farmyard here, small rams that I spotted in this image here, and for some reason a weird giant eagle or owl of some kind? I can't really tell what this is, if any of you guys can, it'd be appreciated if you let me know in the comments. And to top it off, we have a bison that was revealed in the weather coverage video. Next in the Howling Sands, of course you've no doubtedly seen the saber-toothed tigers and the antelope, but I bet you haven't seen the crocodiles that were revealed on this page right here, as well as a horse that was hidden in this screenshot. Now coming to Boreo, we have the white wolves of the fawns, the frost giant, the rideable ram, the polar bear, and the ice dragon. But as well as that, we also have this strange frozen ice cube creature, which could have only just been drawn for concept art, but could potentially be a boss in a dungeon or a mob of some kind. We don't see much of the devastated lands other than the caves that we've been through so far, but the Ember Wolf seems to be a pretty good representation of what we'll get. The bosses that I've discovered so far are this guy that I think will probably turn up in Devastated Lands, along with this strange fellow that appeared between this portal entrance that I found. There's of course the corrupted golem that will attack the Gaia dungeon in zone 1, as well as this strange giant that lumbers a sword round behind him. Okay, so we finished the list, and I want to take a closer look at some of the ones that I can't really place because of where they are or little to no information has been given about them. There's the crawler that seems to be appearing in a dungeon or a mineshaft of some kind. There's definitely birds as we can see from screenshots and multiple concept art. Of course a parrot is shown in the trailer as well as bats in the mineshaft. We can see some giant spiders, and I can assume this is some sort of white widow. And if you take a closer look at this screenshot from the trailer, you can actually see the mob is called Cacti. It's definitely real and will probably show up somewhere in the Howling Sands. But wait, there's also something else to catch in this screenshot. If you scroll right up to the very top, you can see the title of Boar, which could potentially mean there's one of those in the game as well. Then taking a closer look at this footage, there's a secret link that leads to this mob as well as this really strange plant-like brown creature that can be seen on the screenshot of the Temple of Gaia. If any of you guys have any ideas, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. That pretty much ties us up for all of the creatures, mobs, and races that I've spotted throughout the Hytale information we've been given so far. Thank you very much for watching Quebec Corner, stay free, and keep safe.